Thank you very much. As you can see, we're going to talk about the 2020s. The 2020s will be the most disruptive, transformative decade in human history. There will be more change going on in the next 10 years than at least any other 20, 30, or perhaps 40 or 50 year time period in human history. So let's take a quick look as to some of the highlights of what this decade's gonna be. So, basically we're in the middle of a 20 year time period of 2017, 2037, where as you can see, will be the most transformative time in human history. There will be reality as we know it will change from the reality of what we've experienced up to the year 2000 to what we'll be experiencing in the late 2030s. And it is creative destruction, for those of you that don't know that, that's a historical term. When something new comes up, the old is creatively destroyed. But the industrial age took 150 to 200 years to work its way around the planet, and that amount of change is gonna happen in 10 years. So most of you who have followed me, heard me before, read my books, know that I'm the futurist who said we left the information age and we've entered the shift age. And the shift age has these three flows, the flow to global, the flow to the individual, and the accelerating electronic connectedness of the planet. And since I've been talking about this age since 2006, people have always asked me how long it would last. And I wasn't sure, but I'm pretty clear from the vantage point of 2019, it's going to be roughly 2005 to 2030. So this is the transition period. The shift age is the transition period between reality as we have known it up to this new millennium and what we will be facing again in about 10 to 15 years. So in the 2020s, we're all going to be living in a state of cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance is when you have to manage two different realities at the same time and you don't know which, but you're gonna to have to manage both. We're gonna to have to manage the reality that all of us are rapidly leaving and embrace the reality that's rapidly approaching and they will be simultaneous in the transition. So we have to learn how to do that. So in this decade of cognitive dissonance, the change dramatically speeds up. So we're really gonna to have to manage both and live within both. Nobody alive has ever had to manage this with this amount of change. Here's a great quote. The greatest quote about the future I have ever read. I put it in front of my first book, The Shift Age, 2007. We must be the parents of our future rather than the offspring of our past. You must parent the future of your business rather than be the offspring of the past. Yes, parent the future of whatever industry and whether it's education or healthcare, rather than parent the past. Now, this quote is a fabulous quote. Uh, I stand on the shoulders of the three great futures of the last century, Dr. Alvin Toffler, Marshall McLuhan, and our book, Winston Fuller. And this is Toffler's quote. It's about education. So when you read it, we've moved from a knowledge society to a learning society. And so one of the things that we're gonna to have to do going forward is unlearn things. So from the point of education, this means lifelong learning. As a baby boomer, I was told when I graduated from college that I'd have two, maybe three jobs in my lifetime. Because you know, baby boomer parents had, had one job their entire lifetime. Well, now graduates of colleges today are gonna to be told they're gonna to have three to five careers, two to three of which have yet to be invented. So we have to always be learning. So that's what that is for education. But for business and for CEOs and C-level suite that I talk to, what is the most important verb for you for the next 10 years is unlearning. No matter what you've learned, you're going to have to unlearn it and relearn it because the speed of change is accelerating to the point that it's environmental. So the single verb for all of you to practice is the ability to unlearn going forward. So as I speak to corporate retreats and to groups of uh, business people, I talk about these as the major trends that we are in. And, and, and it's worth looking at. We're only moving from an ownership to a rental access society. I first forecast this in 2010 with the collapse of residential housing and into rental, multi-unit. Multi and that has taken off. But think about it. You don't buy content anymore. You don't buy DVDs, you rent from Netflix. 
You don't even, you don't buy CDs, let alone MP3s. You stream from Spotify. I get to read 100,000 books a month from Amazon. So it's on a subscription model. So think how that is going to change. How that is going to change business. Because in the post World War II era, it's all about ownership. I need to buy. No, you don't. We just have rent. We have access. So at a time when resources are becoming ever more scarce on planet Earth, this is a really good move. Another major change is the movement from place to space. The baby boomers are the last generation to grow up with a place orientation. Remember, modern humanity has been around for 150,000 years and only 170 since the beginning of the telegraph. One ten thousandth of one percent of the time modern humanity has been on the planet have we been able to talk other than face to face. So today, for example, more people hear Mozart in one day than were able to listen to it in his entire life because you had to be in the room, right? So, and think about, think about how when I grew up, I knew my aging relatives were in Florida, 1,500 miles away, so every other, we'd drive down. Now it's, hey, Grandma, I see you. Grandma's right here. So your grandchildren, four or five-year-olds, or if you have younger children, you have children under the age of eight, they think that grandma's here. They don't have any perception of place. So we're moving to a spatial consciousness. And of course, everything is moving from fidget, excuse me, physical to digital, the dematerialization of the physical world. Okay, so in the sake of time, I've put these all up here. These are the four major dynamics of the 2020s. First of all, the age of intelligence, the, the merger of humanity and technological intelligence, and all the breakthroughs of neuroscience. And remember that, the, that back 70, 80 years ago, the computer was based on the brain, and we didn't know much about the brain, so we set up this binary type of computer. Now that we're learning really how the brain works, it's going to unleash totally new models of computing. So the age of intelligence, the age of climate change, we now stand on the threshold of potential destruction. In presentations I make called Moving to a Finite Earth Economy, I talk about the fact that if we, humanity, don't move to a finite Earth economy or something very much like it, there will not be civilization by 2100. We have to move to a finite Earth economy by 2030. I started saying this in 2015, and the United Nations confirmed it last year in October. 2018 for the IPCC uh, conference. Uh, emerging new consciousness, you've heard me talk about it. You look at the consciousness of the baby boomers, which were place-based, the millennials grew up with computers, and the digital natives, those that are born since 1997, are all basically on the phone. And we're moving from a place-based to a space-based consciousness. And also, this merging of technological intelligence and humanity is going to unleash a whole new consciousness where we're going to have individual consciousness and much more plugged in collective, global consciousness. And lastly, the reinvention of capitalist economies. As I've been saying to you, capitalism and democracy were invented in the late 1700s, before the Industrial Revolution. And they've run their course. Here in this century, in the 21st century, we've had, I think we're here standing on the threshold of 2020, there's gonna be another big downturn. We have one that went from 2007 to 2011, another one that was 2000 to 2001. The wealth inequality of the world is greater than it's ever been. So we need to move off of growth economies into finite earth economies and recast capitalism. Capitalism is totally the right model. We need to take capital generation out of the middle of it and put in humanity and the planet. So these four things are the things that we're gonna all experience as the big macro umbrellas of this cognitive dissonance that we're gonna have to operate. So thank you very much.